This week's episode of Here For A Podcast is brought to you by Shaka Khan's Net Worth. So, if you have not had a laugh today, you need a little giggle, you need a little chuckle. Google Shaka Khan, <laughs> Shaka Khan's Worth. And when you do, I'm going to give y'all 10 seconds to do it. Google Shaka Khan's Worth and tell me what you see when, as soon as it pop up. 10, 9, 8. Seven. I was on my Vista app. <laughs> Six, <laughs> five, four, four and a half, three, <laughs> two. <laughs> so my, my co-host has walked away from the microphone. <laughs> um, hopefully, you are also... Seeing the same thing that he is seeing right now, <laughs> and seeing oh God, that they played, they pl- oh. shut up, they played the fuck out of Shaka Khan. <laughs> so the picture that you see that Google is currently displaying for Shaka Khan's net worth is <laughs> is Ashford from Ashford and Simpson, who is a man, <laughs> who is a dark skinned man with a jerry curl, who is also dead, <laughs> and. Yes, he's dead. Oh his wife God. Valerie Simpson is is uh, his widower, and she's doing great shows oh in New York. And we love her because she treats me nicely and a lot of the gays nicely. Oh so, <laughs> welcome to this week's episode of Here for a Podcast. I am your sexual therapist, yeah. your daddy, your best friend, oh and your lover, the Superman. T H E E. S U P A M A N. Serious, serious, serious. And across from me, that is still alive, struggling for oxygen, <laughs> is Ronald Matters, R O N A L D M A T E R M A T T E R S dot com. Wow. And he is a culture blogger, and we are here for a podcast. That was amazing. Get your last giggle. Get I know giggle. I gotta do the icebreaker. Oh my god. So Shaka Khan is so one. Shaka Khan is a legend. She doesn't deserve this kind of treatment, and that kind of treatment. It's kids out here that will be confused and won't know who Shaka Khan really is. Like in their 20, 21, 22 year range, they won't know who Shaka Khan really is, and they will Google this, and it won't be as funny to them because they will be looking and thinking that Shaka Khan is a dark skinned man with a jerry curl, with a with a strong goatee. And Shaka Khan is a delicate flower. At least she got nice teeth. This she, man had nice teeth. She has great teeth <laughs> and great wigs. Has more gowns. Grammys than Nicki Minaj. Shaka Khan has ten Grammy awards, and Nicki Minaj currently has zero. And you know, Nicki Minaj is who the girls look up to. Why did Nicki Minaj help me stop laughing? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it became real for you at the moment about Nicki Minaj's Grammy count. Woo! You ain't nothing but a hater. Shaka Khan's worth thirty million dollars. I would have imagined. Well. I'm sure the cost of living went big when she came out. Bria was worth like 49 cent, 59 cent. 30 million is enough to keep an old uh, queen going. She had that Somebody said after in the 10 world. million, it's all the same, girl. Roughly. The girls know your name. When you walk up into the um, Papa Do, ma'am, what would you like? Well, <laughs> yeah, when I walk into the Papa Do, they don't know me yet. So they're like, I'm so y- y'all on. still save room for dessert? <laughs> girl, <laughs> bitch, no, the meal already had. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly. So you have you have a nice breaker this week. Cause I hate the meal. I'm not saving room for dessert. Nigga, no, the meal is high. I'm not saving for dessert, bitch. Uh, coffee or tea? I want to go. Um, serious moment. Wow, that was a great way to open the show. Anyway, icebreaker. Name one thing your last ex was good at in the relationship. Am I going first? You always going first, leaving the bottoms out here destitute. First off, it's hope it's bottoms listening to this that know better than that. Um, my last relationship. Oh shit! That Name last one. one thing your last ex was good at in shit. the relationship. At the last picture of, the, of that nigga that I saw, I don't, I don't, I can't. Oh, because I showed you. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> the nigga might be listening. <laughs> Shut up. Woo. Uh, woo. Well, I guess maybe that. Um, he did have cakes. Okay. And I'll leave it there. So at least sex was good. I and so I'm gonna judge you for for your answer being sexual. 
But I, my answer is he he had a great ping. It was ping. It it, was, yeah, I mean, yeah. looking back on it, I mean, well, time. he was tall, and so um, sometimes I like to be the picture. Of Shaka Khan is still in my head. You're not gonna you're not gonna win, huh? <laughs> okay, I gotta be serious. Okay, is Shaka Khan, your last ex. Gotta, she got great ping. That's I why. gotta host the podcast. Okay. Um, um, but he was tall, and so I kind of, you know, being shorter than him, I liked the tall man. I love mm-hmm. tall men. I love tall men. I love real short men. Okay. So I like different sizes of the spectrum. So he was real tall, and I liked that. Um, oh, Lord. And great ass. Beautiful gowns. Um, but he was smart, though. He had, like, a bachelor's in Yours or mine? Science. Mine. Okay. Because, woo, child. Nobody. Go ahead. A bachelor's in political science, and it's currently actively... Um, he very active Because he had took a break after that bachelor's so He was like look bro I'm not going back to school But right now he's getting his master's in something And he asked me to support him and, Oh lord And I sent him a donation recently I was like you know I understand that you're going through And I'll support And he's really he's really really smart So outside of the pain he's really smart But it's just him He still ain't shit Confirmed um, So um, that's our icebreaker So Hot topics. We're moving on to Sisa <laughs> dissing gay girls. If y'all still out here, uh, Control uh, is my favorite uh, album by Sisa. Uh, oh, this is better than the mixtape. So I'm like, who is Sisa? Am I too old for this um, new movie? I knew, but no, we knew who Sisa was from the. Re- well, some people knew who Sisa was before the Rihanna. I think that's when she like um, got her spot got blown up big. When she was on that first song on the Rihanna album on Anti. Okay. Shit, I don't remember the name of it. Anymore. Consideration. Consideration. No. Yep. Right. Yeah, consideration. Okay. And then her vocal sounded so good with Rihanna's. We never knew yeah. where she ended or where Rihanna started. And so to me, that's when I think she blew up big. Like before, she had a name. She had some songs before mm-hmm. and had a like a cult following. But the Rihanna thing, I think, put her on. I still can't get the shot. Shut my mind. You're not going. I'm trying to be serious, but it's so funny. <laughs> So, SZA, okay. so hopefully y'all still laughing with Ronald Matters if y'all are also watching. <laughs> because otherwise you're gonna be looking at Ronald Matters like he ain't shit. And I'm, well first of all I'm not. But. And at the Superman like he's the professional. Look at that. Look at God. I'm the So we couldn't pro- tell where SZA's vocal and the area. Let's begin. Wow. This is very ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is that ambitious for SZA or ambitious for Rihanna? Well, first you said that uh, the way these gay men are here set up, if I ever have a child, I hope it's a daughter. <clears throat> Because I can't even. Okay, and also say the other thing that she said that was bad. And then what did she? I don't even know what she said bad about Beyonce because I was like, look, if the Beehive is out here saying that she said something about Beyonce, once one swarm, we all just gonna um, take over. I don't even have. The yes. Time. So she says some bad things, and I am not a SZA apologist. I don't even really like I her. I don't even really like her that much. But I'm gonna say this because I'm fair. Okay. Equal. You think she's pretty. <laughs> because that would I, be like I like her I hair. I like her. I like her hair. I like her hair, and I, I like her dark it. skin. Her dark skin tone is perfect. Mm-hmm. So, I guess those are the most, those are the most likable things to me about her. But in fairness, she did say this a while ago. She has issued multiple apologies for both things, and <clears throat> has reportedly done things for the LGBT community. Reportedly. Well, Cardi Since B was then. at the last Pride. I saw Seven Streeter at Pride. Um, K. Michelle was at a recent Pride. Which I saw Pepperman hosting Pride, and Lord Jesus, she hopefully she don't win Drake Race. We'll get um, to that. So, I mean, what did SZA do? I don't know, but um, they said that she has done things for the LGBT community in response to her anti-LGBT Fake remarks. News. Over Fake news. I'm turning into Bob. Donald Trump. Fake over news. five, over five or six years ago. Fake news. So I do believe that people can grow. I do believe that people also have um, core beliefs, and so when she said that about LG, the LGBT community, the G in specific, LOL. and the Black G also in more specifics, um, that sounded like just a core belief. And so when I was nineteen, I decided that. I no longer liked um, steak that was not fully well done. That's a core belief now. I don't cook steak. I don't eat steak that is not Ooh. fully well done. Okay. And it's not going to change no time in my lifetime. And so when she made those comments via Twitter, it just sounded so deep embedded into her personality, into her soul, that I just find it very hard to believe that she has changed her tune 
for herself. I believe that she may have changed her tune for media reasons because she wanted to sell some more albums and she realized that maybe she wasn't going to get far in being um, homophobic, homophobic. But um, I don't know if she really changed her tune like inside, but you can only know that from knowing a person. And that's all. But um, I didn't buy it. I'm not going to buy it. And when I when I don't care about something, I don't talk about it. So I'm done. Also this week. <clears throat> heavy, heavy. No gentleman. I'm going to go to a lighter subject before we get to okay. the heaviest fucking subject. All right now. Because we laughed. but That was a good laugh. <laughs> but it's some real shit going on in this fucking country. Okay. And so before we get to the real shit going on in this okay. country, I want to make sure we have done the perfect shout out to one of the scene stealing queens, the first scene stealing queen that has come into the Trump administration. I thought she was talking said, about Carla Red, but sure. When she ain't stole no scenes. Carla Red is always bringing the drama on Love and Hip Hop. Even this episode, she's dating um, Caesar from Black Ink Crew, New York. And I'm like, why is Trey from New York in Atlanta? But I'm sure he's growing his business opportunities. But anyway, you said another type of queen. Yeah. So this is an educated type of queen that made it all the way to the White House. Okay. Um, this queen is a white queen. This is a, you know the girls like, this is a black gay podcast. I cannot believe y'all. No. Well, this is a gay podcast okay. as well as black. Um, okay. Just don't get me in trouble because I'm not. Send all the tweets to at the Superman. He spelled it for you. I did. And I'll continue to. Um, <clears throat> so this young man won Teacher of the Year across the country. He won. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So he's actually from Rhode Island. His name is Nikos Giannopoulos. And he won Teacher of the Year and was invited to the White House. Congratulations. During Pride Month when we're not recognizing LGBT uh, causes at the White House for the first time. It's the Wildlife last, Month for the last Security Month or something. For the la- no, for the last yeah. 12 years. Even President Bush um, acknowledged LGBT Month mm-hmm. and he had all kind of faults and all kind of fuck up and mishaps. This one, we don't, we don't know nothing this about. This one, what's his name? This one. Y'all Google him. <laughs> um, but the teacher's name is Nikos Giannopoulos. He won Teacher of the Year. He took a picture next to Donald Trump and Donald Trump did not know that he had the fan present. And he popped the fan right at the time of the photographer taking the picture to also show unity with the girls, the ladies, Hello. the queens, and also wore a rainbow pin on his suit instead of the American flag. So that I would be that. remiss in talking about that in pop culture because to me that is a pop culture moment. That is pop culture. Of the Trump popped administration the because someone popped the fan next to the President of the United States and also wore... A gay pen during Pride Month next to the President of the United States. Who that, refuses? Who refuses to acknowledge that this month is actually here for us? So I'm here for you, Nikos. Uh, go back to Rhode Island and Slay and run for office. Okay, add that to your resume. The price is going up if he got to come out. He probably gonna be hosting um, Prides and putting it on the Instagram flyers. Also, this um, these current days. In pop culture. These current days. Wow. Yeah. You make us sound so old. Back in my day. Um, so it was recently announced that Jay-Z is coming out with another album. They said it was a movie. 444 four, four was a movie. Coming. They originally said it was a movie. This is a misdirect. It's an album. So originally. So is it a movie with a soundtrack? Is he going to so win in Houston the soundtrack? He going to Beyonce the <laughs> shit. He's, it's an album with movie content. So oh. um Herschel Ali and Danny Glover are in the All promo girls. material for six thirty. So before it was um uh, originally Lupita Nyong'o, mm-hmm. Danny Glover and Herschel. We haven't seen the Lupita Nyong'o in footage yet. Oh, okay. Um but for the for the video aspect of him promoting an album that's coming out on six thirty, it is actually Herschel Ali and Danny Glover like shadow boxing as father and son. Mm-hmm. In like the old Rocky kind of way. Mm-hmm. So the most important reason why this is Hot Topics and the most important reason why this is pop culture is if there's a, a Jay-Z album coming, there's a Beyonce feature attached somewhere. Oh, I thought you was going to say because the last album sold a million before it was even released. Oh, well, now, that is a milestone <laughs> before. Like, oh, okay, so it sold a million before it was released. So what do I need to go to the store for? Because <laughs> he made his money. Yeah. 
Also, um, aware, because I was one of the ones that got got the album for free. I love the Magna Carta album. And actually. I was sitting in the car next to you, and I was like, oh, I got the album for free as well. So yeah. do you want to play from yours? Because I like track number seven. So Magna Carta was great. We've all been waiting on the follow-up to Jay-Z's album. Yeah. We needed some newer, more Jay-Z music. And we almost 99% are sure there's a there's Beyonce, a Beyonce feature. feature. At least a blue interlude. So I'm here for it. I can't wait. Um, we got 10 days before new music comes out that I'm going to be really, really interested in. We got to go to the Target this weekend and give me some Depends because I'm not going to be able to handle it. You also <laughs> won't be able to handle, you wasn't able to handle Shaka Khan. So I know that when <laughs> Jay-Z album drop, you're going to be full. Just put me on the prayer list at church this Sunday. So next week when the album come out, <laughs> uh, hopefully my blood won't let loose. Amen. Great. So also this week in sexual health. <laughs> I try not to be negative. I really want y'all to know. Is um, that the truth or is that a lie? No, that's the truth. Oh, okay. Negative in like the Nene Lee. Always. <laughs> always negative. These always. girls are always negative. So I try not to be one of the girls that's always negative. But when I see something, I got to say something. Okay. Prep is not a party drug. I. Huh? So. I I can see us taking like Tina and being party party okay. party, but absolutely. So, so if I take the prep in front of you, does that make it a party? What makes it a party drug? Uh, Nothing. That's why it's not. <laughs> so um, there are multiple arc- articles on multiple blogs that are circulating about prep being a party. not Ronald Matters dot com. Not that one. Lord Jesus, because I don't. No. So uh, there are multiple articles circulating about prep being a party drug, and. Um, on multiple blogs and so with that it gains more steam it gains a little bit more legitimacy legitimacy because people are reading it more and sharing it more and in this vein i want to make sure that we um say the truth and say the facts because in 2017 facts are alternatives alternative (laughs) subjective and replaceable we don't know i have understood these as long as we're sticking to the facts i'm going to give the actual definition of party drug. The term party drug and or club drug, because it was they were called club drugs before they were called party drugs, refers to a variety of drugs found at dance clubs and house parties. Party slash club drugs are sometimes referred to as designer drugs. These substances are typically produced in illegal laboratories using a variety of chemicals and used in conjunction with party and fundamental activities. So... In that definition, there is nothing that Truvada fits. It is not illegal. It is not made for clubs. It is not made for parties. It is not made as a designer drug. Um, And it is also not made in illegal laboratories. Nope. So when you spout your wrong ass fucking opinion on the internet just to feed your own clickbait, think about Real people looking up real statistics and looking up real things and think about all the misinformation that you're putting out there when you have an opportunity as a journalist to do the right thing and put out right information when there are so many good stories and right stories that you can be informing the public on. Go sit in the corner. Just go sit in the corner if that's all you want to do is spread fake news. Prep is not a party drug. Party drugs are all the ones that I just... Gave you the definition Tina, of Tina, GHB. There's plenty of those, right? Ecstasy. So, <clears throat> if I'm at the club and I give you a prep pill, and I take a prep pill, like, what's this blue pill? What what pill this is? You're not gonna get high off that. Oh, I'm not. I would take no. this back. <laughs> There's this. no high from pe- prep. If it's your first time, you might get sleepy. You might get diarrhea. I might get diarrhea, and then I should and that's not a fucking party because I'm a bottle. So I'm and what what what, what kind? How are we gonna party after this and you shitting all over yourself slash sleep? So yeah, we can't stay for um Usher Feature and Alicia Keys, my boo. I need to go. Boo, we also boo. we also right can't now. stay for Usher Feature and Chris Brown. Well, Chris Brown feature Usher party because you shitting all over yourself and you're asleep, <laughs> thinking that this is a party drug. So I encourage y'all, don't even look up the sites, don't even Google them, don't give them no clicks. I'm not even gonna mention the sites because they shouldn't get no traffic here, but it is not a party drug, and that's all. Um, this week I gotta be serious. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Okay, so I was looking up socialization this week. 
on the internet, and it's very important that you Google two words after you Google Shaka Khan. Yes, you're not gonna make it. <laughs> I had this, I had all what I was gonna say planned, and then you had me Google that, and so now I'm googling. I'm like, so Google primary socialization, and you will see that the answer is that it's your first experiences with languages, values, beliefs, behaviors, and norms of your society. And as mine, not yours. I know our target audience is 25 to 34. Well, the people who we reach mostly are 25 mm-hmm. to 34 black gay men. So I have to say this to you. Make sure that you are keeping in mind the LGBT youth that we are influencing when we post our pictures on Jacked, the things that we say on our profiles, and the types of media that we put out there on the internet. Because first of all, that group on Facebook is still problematic. Whew, up to 41,000 um People in the group now. I thought and the administrator said he was going to delete it. He said he was going to delete it, but that I was, was also fake I news. was, I was wondering if he just deleted himself as the primary administrator because right now there's a, a oral sex challenge for for from the bottoms that's making way. But so you have to show the bottoms that you can eat ass. No, correctly. the bottoms are like I'm the best. Um, I can suck oral dick performer better. out here, and I'm just like. Mm. How are you? Perf- you just got to show a video, and hopefully. It- but the gag is that the the meat ain't hitting the gag reflex. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, you can say, oh, look, I can deep throat, but his dick is five inches, and you like, look at me, like accomplishment. You need to not even Urban Dictionary gag reflex. You just go to Webster. Cause that's not what a gag is. Show us your gag reflex <laughs> when you do um, what's homegirl with the um, the grapefruit? Yeah, and the dildo. If yeah. you could do that, then with that's the, that's a gag challenge to me. Okay, put a condom on with your teeth. Primary socialization is can be influenced by the, by a lot of things, but it's definitely influenced by family, religion, and media. So, who are we deciding is our gay our gay version of a family? Because of course, we don't get to choose our regular family. But when you're choosing a gay family, like, these people inspire me. These are the people that I look up to. I want to be like these people. So with a gay family and with religion, first of all, there are some things that are Bible in uh, the LGBT community. Like, um, don't boo-boo on boys. Um, have your weaves together if you're going to be femme. Don't let your semen hit the floor. That's just the regular one. But there are some things that are religion in the LGBT community. And there are definitely... Influences in media that LG, the LGBT community looks for. So that's why I try to make sure on RonaldMatters.com, I include posts like 24 black gay couples getting married and giving me hope and things like that because it's important for young LGBT youth to see media that can steer them in what I deem the right way because I don't know what the right way could be deemed to them. The right way might just be, well, she had made $250,000 last night at the club. But um, it's important for them to realize that those role models yes. aren't perfect role models. Mm-hmm. So um, Amber Rose. just like no comment, um, we left that in last week. So yeah. just like in the movie Moonlight, um, mm-hmm. Chiron looking at uh, Mahershala Ali's character is not an absolute representation of someone that he should model himself as. Mm-hmm. You know, he shouldn't have become a drug dealer. Yeah. He should become a responsible black man that wants to care for other people around him. Mm -hmm. But that's something that he saw and wasn't necessarily a positive thing. Hopefully, we don't know if we're going to ever see a moonlight, too. But hopefully, you know, he became a counselor after that. (laughs) Okay. Because drug dealing wasn't the way. So the same thing, um, you know, people in your environment are not always going to necessarily be the ones that you should model yourself after. But studying socialization and primary socialization specifically... And so the early teachings of a culture and what social norms are, as black gay men, let's make sure that we are teaching the younger people under us what it's, what it's like so they can understand that, well, one, everyday culture is not about shenanigans, and at least when it comes to pride, because it still is Pride Month, that we understand the heritage behind what we are out here fighting for. Because as I said um, the week before, Texas is still out here acting up. Bessie DeVos is still out here acting up. Trump's still president. And he ain't. Um, he waved a gay flag once during his campaign, but he ain't waved it no more since he done took the oath. So we still have to make sure that we are protecting our heritage, our culture, and what we are teaching the youth matters. Ronald matters. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And so the next subject is a very heavy subject. 
And it's something that we need to talk about and get over and get done because it has to be talked about. It's something that we cannot brush over. Um, Philando Castile did not kill himself. On Facebook I, Live, he killed himself. Oh, okay. I want us to all remember this moment in history because you're all a part of history in this moment. People um, were alive and watching the, the coverage of Rodney King um, be beat in Los Angeles and know what the riots were about in L.A. and know what the riots in Detroit were about. And they know that they were a part of history at that moment. Realize that you are also a part of history in this moment right now. In Philando Castile was killed on Facebook fucking live. His girlfriend was recording. It was out there for everyone to see, unedited, unfiltered, unadulterated. And still a white judge and a mostly white jury told us that the police officer that killed him that is responsible for his death is not guilty. You are a part of of history right now you are seeing this you are able to tell your kids you are able to tell your grandkids that you are around to see injustice happen and happen rampantly philando castile didn't kill himself and neither did the last 30 black people where there were no convictions there were either mistrials or any of this bullshit that our pretend justice system is trying to tell us so remember that you are also part of history remember that you can change history by remembering history. So when Trayvon Martin happened, it was a movement. When Mike Brown happened, it was a movement. When Philando Castile is now happening, this also needs to be a movement. We know Philando Castile didn't kill himself. He didn't die in a car accident. He didn't die of a heart attack. He didn't die of an aneurysm. There was a white police person that was afraid for no fucking reason other than someone pigmented darker than them that killed him and it's wrong it's not justice and justice obviously is fucking blind if we believe that philando castile killed himself because the fact that someone was murdered on facebook live and no one gets to go to jail no one gets a fucking ticket i got tickets for um parking incorrectly on the goddamn street so i'm guilty of that this this person is shooting a unarmed, a well, an armed black person. Excuse me, an armed black person Who that, that declared him, that declared himself armed the way that he was supposed to, the way that you're trained he's to. He's been watching the news. When you get <laughs> when you get your your gun license, he did exactly what he was supposed to do, and he was still shot and killed on Facebook Live. People still move the goal the goalpost every time and say, "Well, you had a hoodie on, you were doing something wrong." You were resisting arrest. You were selling cigarettes. You were selling cigarettes. You were the fault. He had a the toy fault, gun at a park. The he, fault is always with the black person that might have been doing a little wrong. That might have been doing a misdemeanor. The last time I checked, the 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 justice for a misdemeanor is not death. So. I'm not here for it. What was the Y'all, misdemeanor? He was in the passenger side. He's. I'm, I'm saying. There was no misdemeanor. Oh, I'm saying, okay. I'm saying that at a minimum, even if it was a misdemeanor, the 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 justice for a misdemeanor ain't death. The justice is not hey, man. Um, Mr. Policeman on the beat that gets paid thirty five thousand dollars a year gets mm-hmm. to decide my fate. That's the justice that Philando Castile unfortunately was dealt, and that's the justice that none of us should stand up um, for, and we should all stand against. And what broke my heart the most was his mom during her um, press conference after the ruling. She was like, her son had one tattoo, and it was of the Twin Cities of Minnesota. And he, because he loved the state so much, and then the state turned around and killed her child, her only son. And that hurt to watch. And you know, it hurts every time you see the parents of Trayvon Martin or you see the mother. Mike Brown, or you see the wife of Eric Gardner, you see the family of Sandra Bland. It just hurts so much. The people who loved Freddie Gray. It's just, I just, Terrence Crutcher, and just so many people. It's just, and so my thing is, how come the UK is able to um, have police officers who don't even carry guns, and they're able to have a civilized UK, but 
here, um, you can and in at least six other countries, you could be a CNA at a mental health facility and be trained on how to treat a mental health patient who has a homemade weapon or maybe even a syringe if they can get it from you, and you can detain them. But then when you call nine one one because there's a, a burglar in your house, and then you come out with your knife because you think it might be the robber, and then the police shoot you in front of your children. That happened in Seattle, so that was the so, the, all, the other story that happened this past weekend. I'm like, there was a mentally disturbed mother that was pregnant and had two kids in the household, and she called and said, "I need help. I, I am mentally ill. I'm having an emergency. I need some help." They came in. They saw her with a knife. It Even, might be the person who called us, girl. Would you say at least she, take one second for thought? The thought that a pregnant woman with a knife. Has scared three policemen. You are trained to be in these situations with people with knives, with people with guns, with people with grenade, grenade launchers. You're trained escalation of force. And the fact that there was no escalation of force, it was just, I'm scared, pow, shoot, pow. dead. Not, well, she's a female. It's some people she's in also, here that's called she's, us. she's also identified as mentally ill, a female, also identified as mentally ill, also. Visibly pregnant. Nowhere did the police officers that reacted to that situation count any of those three very important points. They counted, well, I feel a little scared, so she got to die. So I say to you guys um, not to depress you and not to um, make you sad. It's the middle of the work week. This is our reality, June 20th, 2017. You are a part of history. You can talk to your kids about being in the middle of this shit. Hopefully, at some point, we won't be, and we can look back on it and say, damn, those are some horrible times. Thank God we move forward. But we can't move forward unless we talk about it, unless we are creating conversations in our spaces, in our workspaces, in our friendships, and being informed. Because that pregnant, mentally ill woman didn't know she was going to die by the hands of police officers. The one she called to come help her. So don't don't think that you are above the bullets of your own local police department. And I say that to say uh, this last episode of Drag Race, the girls came for Valentina and they had all the bullets lo- locked and cocked for Valentina. Well, it looked like some of Farrah's um, highlighter head fell on Peppermint's titties. And I was like, can you just like take a napkin and wipe it out? It don't even have to be name brand. It don't have to be Kleenex. It could be the Rite Aid brand or the Walgreens. Just take some of that highlighter that you put on your titty and wipe it off. Because you trying to be... I know this is drag, but like your titty shouldn't have to be this shiny. So, she actually might be the winner of this season. And um, First of you, all, you God have, is the winner of this season. First might, and foremost. You might have to take them comments back. Only thing I have to take back is um, if I shit on the dick, and I haven't done that in a decade. So, what is she talking about? So Valentina was oh. crowned Miss Congeniality slash fan favorite. I would say she was crowned Either, fan favorite. First off, RuPaul crowned her Miss Congeniality. RuPaul other, didn't do shit. The other queens there was happy to be on a reunion and get a check. Yeah. So they don't have no crowns. They don't have no sashes. They didn't get $5,000 Sasha back. Sasha didn't wear one of her little regular crowns she be wearing? Oh. No, it, first off, when you said regular, that told me where that was. She wasn't the winner. <laughs> um, there was one queen on the stage that, okay. got, a, that got a trophy and they got $5,000. It was only them, one with a sash. I heard it said Miss Cuckoo. And none of them were Sasha, Trinity, or who was the other? Shea Coulee. My choice Shea Coulee Coulee came for her for no reason. And it was somebody else on the left side. God, I don't know. Charlie Hyde. All the winners said no, no, no. Aja with her ugly ass. Oh, first off, yeah. Wow, wow. I don't care. Wow. Aja's not gonna fight me. Your tone seems really pointy right now. And I'm okay with that. Aja is five five. She ain't gonna fight me. Okay. You five eight, so y'all same height. We're not. That that tells me that you can't do math well. So, because you went to the gym twice this year, you feel like you better than Aja? Yeah. She's from Brooklyn. <laughs> you know the girls that say, I'm from so and so Ain't so, that where Remy Ma's from? This make... Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, shout out to me and my family <laughs> 21 dress. 
<laughs> with the bra on the outside. Okay. That was a full fail. See, in a moment, in a moment when you are reading someone, you have to have successes. You have to have consistent successes. And I'm not getting in the middle of this Remy Ma, Nicki Minaj yes, beef. I'm not, because it's over already. Um, pick a side, pick a side. The side has been picked. <laughs> and <laughs> um, it's the side where you. I work. pick Jesus, because y'all out here live Soldiers English. for Christ. Um, Her show out of my face. <laughs> but no, Kendall Jenner had wore a dress. That appeared similar to that, and so Forever Twenty One had did a knockoff of it that was available for twenty two dollars on the sales rack in their store, and so then Barb's made sure that they went and found it when Remy roared and was coming for the Queen when they were recently at Queen Who Cert in Atlanta, but no, Remy had showed posted where the rules were: yes, you can perform, no, you can't have security with guns, and when you leave, we will send you the wire deposit. So Remy had did her performance and left, but then Nikki had came out and it was like that other girl had left because she was scared. No, girl, I left because I wanted to make sure my wire deposit came through. Now, if I need to turn back around, where are you hosting the after party at? Because I can come back around. But y'all know she ain't coming back no goddamn where. Remy's I'm still on paper. It's Remy's still on paper. And that's that's all I'm saying. So she's still and trying to be a good I'm not, person. And I I fully. Understand, but Nicki that Nicki Minaj to... is five foot four ish, right? I think she's like five. five. Look, him is four eleven, so maybe she's five three, five four. Yeah, sure, she she's Nikki tiny. Is a she's bit not tiny. like she ain't getting ready to get, go fist to fist with Remy Ma. I'm not expecting that. Okay, but where Nicki is and where Remy ain't. I don't care what gun Remy brought to the to the stage. I don't care what, which one she what bought. What type of mother shoot a one? What she say? Shoot a friend over, over a wreck. What type of mother, mother leave, leave her one son, son over a stack? stack? Are we gonna do the whole? Oh, sorry, we're not gonna. Do, we're not gonna do it. Uh, and then copyright claim. Sorry, sounds loud. Yeah, and no frauds also so more than um, Plato Plomo. What the fuck was the name of that album? Nobody, Your chest hair looks really nice nobody, today. Nobody, and knows. it looked nice last week. I so we just picked a brunch. side, and I said we weren't gonna pick a side. But <laughs> fuck, damn. What were we talking about? <laughs> That's the main <sighs> question. <clears throat> sexual asphyxiation. Damn, I can't even huh? say it right. Sexual asphyxiation. What that is? How you spell it? Let me see. A s p h y x i a t i o n. Okay. Sexual asphyxiation. Asfix, fix, shit. You asphyxiation. <laughs> you asphyxiation. Asphyxiation. Look, I said it five times straight. Asphyxiation. Okay. So, sexual asphyxiation. Uh-huh. The AS word. Asphy- asphyxiation. Okay. Is when you use the method of cutting off your air supply to heighten your orgasm. Is that doing poppers? That is a method, but that's not the method. You that's not the actual method. about that one, but okay. So, no. So, like, when people like to be choked in sex. Me. Yeah. So, this is also um, debuted on the, the first episode of Claws of the white boy that was fucking Nisi Nash and Karuchi. Ooh. He liked sexual asphyxiation. Okay. That? Wow, I got it right that time. So, it is a growing trend to self-asphyxiate. Oh, so outside of okay, well, I don't have no man here or no woman here to choke me. People are now asphyxiating my themselves with the with ropes and or belts, and sometimes they're losing control and just choking yourself and having an orgasm at the same time. So I said that to say that this I is might a, do that tonight. What time are you leaving? Because I got my Abilene sitting by the dresser, and the Abilene is really good, by the way. I don't know if the girls have. Figured out what Abilene. I made a YouTube a vid about it and I didn't like it, but I, I, li- I live for it. Blessings. So I need to get the belt and you say put it around my neck. Do mm-hmm. I put the the the? So yeah, you put the, so you put the um like the um the stem of the belt uh-huh. in one hole that's like loose. One hole that's loose. <laughs> um, around your neck, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then right when you get to the point of orgasm, you mm. tighten it, and so the oh. stem goes into the next hole, oh. and you feel like the contraction the of the belt hole. against your neck. Okay. And so I'm actually physically in here doing it. Y'all I'm watching you doing it. it. I'm getting turned on watching you do it. I wish Y'all, I could. 
Record this. Anyway, so the belt gets now tighter because it's one hole tighter across oh, your neck. Uh-huh. And you're at the point of orgasm and you can't control your breath. So the point is to make sure that the next hole is just enough where you can do it, undo it yourself after you've had the orgasm. Mm-hmm. And not tight enough where you can't undo it and you're there choking oh. and dying. So... People are. So not, if I call you tonight, you're not. You're no, don't call sure. me in. That, don't call me in that. No, nope, I'm not uh-huh. there in, in the, that time of need. No, okay. but people are dying. It don't on, take me long to get there. So if, like after we record and you leave, I might. It don't take me long to get there. I'm just okay. I'm just saying. People are dying on the internet trying this shit. I'm saying try it, but try it cautiously. <laughs> And okay. if you not the responsible type, that you can't pull yourself back. Don't try back, with a waist belt. Don't waist fucking try. Be having two um, notches. Two. You gotta have a big ass neck to have a waist belt <laughs> on your neck to do the. Whose neck is what? No. <laughs> what kind of goddamn She Hulk are you talking about? Fucking. Um, it was from the She by Sheree collection, two thousand nine. Lord, what is your song for your soul? This week, thanks to Dewitt Seaforth, we are doing Phyllis Hyman inspired. Happy songs birthday, for- boo. His fat birth- ass. You a little bit gay, but his ass is fat. Okay. Well, anyway, my Phyllis Hyman song because I listened to the Essentials because I knew I had to do this for homework for my job. No, this is not a job. I love doing this podcast. I don't know. I had to do this for the podcast, so I listened to the Essentials because I wanted to make sure I heard the hits. If I was gonna listen to twelve songs, all two of them need to be hits because y'all ate like or she twelve get, play. Y'all ate like she got all the hits. Twelve here. play is good to fuck too. And I don't the even like. The thing is, I got my iPad on mute, but I'm still getting all my notifications with noises. Anyway, they know you deaf. Um, <laughs> Twelve Play is still an album that you can fuck to, even if you don't like Rick R. Kelly anymore. And I don't like R. Kelly anymore. I kind of banned him. But Twelve Play, yeah. Continue. Phyllis Hyman. A lot of the songs were slow. Kind of Keisha. She. I, it felt like she was the Keisha Cole of her time. Even Keisha Cole with her like fourth album made like. I'm gonna pretend like I'm in love songs because I'm tired of thinking about he breaking Being a my thought, heart. He breaking my he heart. He fucked me and he left me. He breaking me. my heart. He breaking my heart. He Idris me. Elba, Idris Elba, Idris Elba. So my song for my soul this week is still a little Keisha Cole, but it was set to a disco beat. <laughs> it was, you know, what is it? You know how to love me. And it was like a, it was set to a disco beat and she was talking about going home with her ex. Cause is this he, from the second album? He, I played it earlier when we were. Oh, okay, I, I didn't and know. um, yeah, he the only he he not the only one, but he know how to do it right. And girl, the way I'm feeling right now, one more shot and I might be out. So let me go and take this to the house. And it was said to a disco beat. It's like one of those songs that you play like. And right what's the after. name of it? You know how to love me. Oh, you know how to love me. Okay, you know what's going to happen when you play this song. Um. It's like one of those songs you play at the family reunion, like right at the Womack and Womack, Baby, I'm Scared of You. But like right before you play the, um... The Lonnie. You know I love, uh, 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 of you. And then after that, do you play the Frankie Beverly and Mays before I let go? Oh, Because it don't matter which family reunion you at. Before I let go is always the divorcee song. But anyway, so, um, yeah, this song was like right in that era of music. And then I was like, if I had to pick a second song, it was I Ain't Asking. And so and then when I was looking at that, I noticed that I like her song title. She was like, you know how to love me. Get over here and swallow this cat. Well, it wasn't literally that. But like the way that people Ooh. titled songs in the 80s, it was very direct. I'm glad and- that you got <laughs> Swallow This Cat out of anything that Phyllis Hyman has ever wrote. Because Swallow This Swallow this cat has not been Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. It's not been in, in, in the range. But yeah, I ain't asking um for your love. It's definitely another song that I like because it was also said to an upbeat disco beat. And she was very direct. I'm not asking for your love. You're gonna get over here and give I'm it to me. Yeah, um no, so I, I was like, that's that's my type of girl. Cause you know I'm very direct like that. The reason why I'm still single. But um I'm not asking for your love. And I also felt like it should have been titled I Ain't Begging for Your Love. Because, look, if I miss one, next 15 won't come. Okay? So, you can get up here and get this, or I can go get something else somewhere else. And those are my songs for my soul. Feel the time. Very, very brandy, begging and pleading. Got it. <laughs> um, so, I am a Phyllis Hobbit fan, and so I was excited about this task. And I'm not going to give a list, because I can give a list and a playlist of Phyllis Hobbit songs. But... Before I say my actual song for my song, Living All Alone, is obviously 
the most quintessential. I did best enjoy this song. Phyllis Hyman song, and I still enjoy it and will enjoy it. I think I, the first time I heard um, Living All Along, I might have been 17 or 18. I was still in high school. I hadn't even left for the military yet. And um, uh, my aunts and my mom liked it. It was They still had it on vinyl. Oh, wow. And uh, I was listening to some of their old vinyl shit because I was listening to the Prince on vinyl still at the same time, which also spirited other songs earlier. Anyway... So I've been listening to it for a long time. It's always going to be a song for my soul. But the song for my soul this week is um, Under Your Spell. Uh So I've heard this song too. I've heard this song before. Okay. Under Your Spell can be um, defined by... You know, like smelling someone that smells irresistible for the first time. I'll never forget um, the first time I was in a gay club in Dallas. Nasty. Yeah. It was this six foot two dark skinned man um, that was flirting with me. And I wasn't sure I wasn't even supposed to be in here, but. He was six foot two. You weren't sure you were supposed to be in here. You paid your ten dollars, got your wristband, and showed. I, but I was in the military, and I'm this is my first time in the gay like, club, and I knew this is before uh, we had abolished don't ask, don't tell. Okay. So I wasn't sure. I I, I wasn't supposed to. You be knew here. if he was gonna get back to base. You knew you belonged there, but you knew if he was gonna get back to base. I didn't know I belonged there. This is my first time. You don't never know if you belong there your first time. Um. Anyway, so I just felt a little weird, but he was flirt with me, and he was tall, and he dark, he was dark skinned and he pulled me close at. Some point it was a slow song. I don't even remember the song. I just remember him and I remember his scent. Probably Bobby Valentino. What? <laughs> Bobby Valentino had the hit. He did not. Um anyway. I can hit you right now, but okay. Anyway, he pulled me close to him and I smelled his cologne. And his mm-hmm. cologne was so infectious against his dark skin that I fell under his spell. Um, I was dancing with him. And you didn't know and if you belong there. Okay. <laughs> I belong All there. Right. I belong there after that moment. <laughs> I belong there after that moment. All right. And so that song always harkens, even though I heard that song before I had that moment, that song always harkens back to that moment for me, that my very first time in the gay club, being just taken by, not in that way, taken by somebody and experiencing some new, new shit. He had literally put me under his spell, and I was dancing with another gay man my first time in a gay club, literally probably in, like, the first 20 minutes I was there. And the smell of his, like, it was like a wood scent, a cologne against his dark skin. It was so good. He was tall. I was, and he was tall, and he had pretty teeth. Did he have a low-cut Caesar? Uh, he was bald-headed. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, that's my type. So, Woo! That's my type. Okay. So... Ronald, yeah. Ronald is under his spell as well. Yeah. So anyway, under my spell, listen to it and you will understand how I got there. I really enjoyed the hashtag song for your soul this week, and it was great because I um I had my iPhone and I was just listening to music and listening to the essentials because I told you I, I need them to all be hits. Um, yeah, this your label meeting with me, so child, you need to know what you gonna give me. Absolutely. Um and. We are giving you a product because we done went through all of the um the boogers and said this is the best one. And so y'all get to hear this one, go look for this one, go get your spirit moved. You can't go wrong with this. Yeah. This week at listener questions. Oh, um this I don't feel like we could both effectively answer the listener questions. I do want us to give feedback, but I want you guys to tweet us, Facebook, comment on our Instagram post. Um, here for, at Here for a Pod, and this week our listener questions are about bisexuality. Rashawn mm-hmm. asks, "Is your bisexuality more fluid, or does it lean in one direction or the other?" Mm-hmm. So I love Rash- Rashawn. I met him in Texas Dallas? last month when I was in Houston. Was I in Houston last month? Yeah. Yes, I was. Well, in he Houston. goes back and forth. What did he look like? Yeah, man. And mm-hmm. so Rashawn asks, "Is your Bisexuality more fluid or does it lean? I know he didn't ask you that. No, he was asking me. That. <laughs> it was a question for the podcast. Okay. Oh my god, can he, can Rashawn ask a listener question? Uh, and you'll be sucking dick. So is your bisexuality because since you're a top and you're a bottom sometimes? Who wait. said I was a bottom sometimes? Anyway, I definitely feel like in my encounters with um, bisexual men, you know, first of all, you got to give them the nut first because they're not gonna be honest with you unless they don't. 
got their um, primal instincts out the way. Um, a lot of guys say that like they are with women because the social expectancy, the what we talked about earlier with their um, socialization norms that they've and learned. social comforts. Mm-hmm. But they enjoy being with men the same way that I talked about last week. That Frank Underwood, aka Kevin Spacey, when he has sex with men, it's because that's what he wants to do. But Kevin Spacey in House of Cards is having sex with men because he enjoys having sex with men. So mm. I've encountered a lot of men who say like, being with me is like a fetish, and but they know that they've still got to go back to their women or go back to their wives. Is that because they think he's trans? Why is that? A Come on, trans movement. <laughs> Why is that a fetish? But that's what my experience with what has been your experience with bisexual men? Do um they, I haven't had many experiences with men that really are bisexual. That, I admit to and so bisexual. I've had experiences with men that were like, I'm bisexual, but I'm like a full bottom. I'm like how, But there are men who will bottom if they're gonna be with I'm, another man, but okay. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. But in further investigation, when I looked into it and I found out Hallelujah. <laughs> That wasn't the case. So a lot of gay men start off with the bisexual um, disclaimer. Mask. Uh, but no, they really aren't bisexual. So I want to open that question up to the listeners that do deal with more bisexual men than I do. So if you do deal with bi- more bisexual men than I do, hashtag here for it pod, H E R E F O R I T P O D, and tell us what your. Um, history has been What do you feel Are they more leaning to one place Or you think that they just masquerading Cause mine Mine be lying So tell me what y'all think This sound like a shirt Mine be lying uh, <laughs> that's that's time for a divorce if you'd have made a shirt out of mine be lying. Like this okay. nigga lie to you all the time, you'd have made a shirt out of mm. his lies to you. Well, I have a never mind. <laughs> what are you here for this week? Hopefully you're here for something this week, Logi. I'm not. Okay, well let me go first. This week I am definitely here for your impression of me last week. <laughs> because I listened to your impression of me last week. And you know what? It was so on point. I was like, the kids do need to have my coin. The girls need to respect that I've been out here doing it. And the girls need to visit RonaldMatters.com. And so when it came to the icebreaker last week, when we impersonate each other, bitch, toast, hats off, whatever, confetti, throws glitter. You definitely got it right with your impression of me. Well, I am an actor. <laughs> because the girls, I was here for it. And I had to like rewind it back like 30 seconds because... It was a short, but I like to listen. But anyway, I love here for a podcast. But I listened back to it. I was like, he get show got it right. The girls need to have my coin. First and foremost, the girls need to respect me. And Hopefully you get some coins that are missing right now. Dun, 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 dun. So, <laughs> shout out to you. I'm here for your impression of me last week on the icebreaker. I gave, <laughs> I gave Ronald an, an opportunity to be petty, and he I chose not to be petty. So, will never respond so, to my adversaries. I told you that you know that in offline conversations with me, I'm testing you. If there are quarters, oh yes, first of all, the girls oh, yes, you can be tested. Worth being responded to because first of all, I make more money than that girl oh. twice. Oh yes. over. More money than I could make in my part-time job with my blog and this podcast. I have enough coin to do whatever the... F- oh, yes. Be humble. I'm saying like you. This sounds like a oh, yes. impression part two of... Andy oh, Superman. yes. You got but, all, the, all the followers, all the coin. Yeah. I'm listening. Um, so, shout out to you because your impression of me last week was the um diggity. I don't know how old they make me sound, but... Old. <laughs> um, so, this week... <coughs> I told you about dragging shit out. <clears throat> Get it out. Come on. I'm not here for all lies on me. All lies on me. All, Somebody lied all, on you? Well, they they stay doing that. <laughs> but there's a movie slash biopic. Oh, the movie we went to that see. Oh. Is all lies on me. Yeah. And yeah. before I even saw it, Jada Pinkett had already put it in the media that what the fuck is this shit? What is this? This is trash. I was there. I am still alive. He has and sent me a letter. I didn't say that. And we did not have that conversation backstage. No, where, no times. And I don't know where the fuck you girls made that up from. This is fiction. <laughs> so I'm not here for all eyes on you. 
being a fucking Wendy Williams lifetime biopic that they wanted to release in the they movies. They was promising they was giving the truth, but girl, all lies on All me. lies. <laughs> all lies matter, apparently. <laughs> These hoes were lying. And for someone to be as transformational, as revolutionary, as poetic, as great, as just fucking phenomenal as Tupac was, it's just... It's going to always be a debate whether he was the best rapper on earth. Debatable. Not here for it. I'm not here for I it. I fell asleep. Was I snoring in the theater? Yes, twice. Oh, well. So, Shit, you, already, you already said you weren't here I for it? Because I hate that when people snore in the theater. It was that I fell asleep. I hate when people be snoring when they fell asleep in the theater. That was definitely you. Um, okay. So, you... Um, Did I poop? No, not okay, that great. Thank God. Thank you. Yeah. Woo. So you semi silently were already not here for it. You just yeah. didn't uh, assemble your <laughs> response. So if y'all are trying to go see all, all eyes on me the, this wait, weekend, wait. no, I'm gonna say that I don't give a fuck. They're not gonna fight me. Um, don't go see it. Go Get see it. Wonder Woman. Wait till it's on Netflix and Netflix will be like, "Are you still there, nigga? We done moved on to something right." Else. And, <laughs> and when Netflix <laughs> says, "Are you still there?" You in the middle of dick and or ass. <laughs> I'm not trying to watch this there? movie. <laughs> nope. I'm still here. I'm over here. Oh, I'm doing something. I'm here, but I'm a little busy right I'm now. I'm busy, Nip, booked. Nip. So I'm not here for it. So if you got nothing else to do this weekend, go see Transformers. Go see Wonder Woman. Oh, we gotta go see Transformers. We are gonna go see Transformers. Go see Transformers. Go see Wonder Woman. All eyes on me. Skip it. Oops. Not here for it. Oops. And it is time for our last call. I'm excited. We're drinking Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Shout Whiskey. out to Tennessee. Whiskey Lord. All the good booty bottoms in Tennessee. This is for you. <sighs> this is for them. I heard you say that you have some good booty in Tennessee. but Oh, there's like four or five. Wow, in the whole state. All right. <laughs> yeah. What are you here for? What's your last call? Oh, my last call this week is to all those people who port, support Here for a Podcast. <laughs> Ooh, look, this the whiskey that went straight to the blood veins. Um, you know, I love you guys so much And Martell and I started this But I don't want to get emotional Because I done had like six, seven shots of whiskey at this point but Man down I love you guys so much And Martell and I do this podcast Every single week with No promoters Except for Martell and I And the equipment Martell and I put together And Martell and I come together And make sure that we talk about sexual health and mental health for the LG, black LGBT community because it means so much more. It's not just about us. It's about all the people who listen to us. And, whew, I don't want to get much. All the people who care, all the people who need this. So, um, 14, 15 episodes in, we have no sponsors. We sit here every week and commit ourselves every week. And, and we will do it for 15 to 20 more episodes. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs> we're going to put a like, limit because we don't girl, work for free all the way. We got to start finding Like, girl, we 30 episodes in. We got no sponsors. What's going on? We just do a survey to find out. But, um, y'all, thank you so much for listening here for a podcast. You you guys inspired us. Like, that one week where we didn't do a podcast, and it was because the audio quality was bad. And y'all was like, um, fuck the audio quality. Release that bad audio quality, please. But, you know, we got standards over here. We love you guys. And girls have struggles over there. Whoops. And thank you guys so much for listening to Here For It Podcast. This week's goal is tell a friend. Share this with one friend. Post it on your social media. Hopefully one new person listen. Cause it's definitely and make a- sure you also subscribe. So we our listenership 100- is oh. a lot higher than people that want to get the notification when we post an yeah. episode. So don't find yourself in my inbox and or Ronald uh-huh. Matters inbox asking when a new episode is coming out. And you could easily be subscribed and get the content as soon as it is posted. Subscribe. Make your friends subscribe. Share. Start the conversation. Swallow or spit, but don't let it sit. That also. This week, my last call <laughs> is to the great... The phenomenal. You know how it's going to Beyonce, so I don't know. She's, some people say she looks like Beyonce. <laughs> okay. She is the slut from the 90s, also from Detroit, my hometown queen, the girl from Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kenya Moore, is fucking married. And her husband not ugly. And her husband's not ugly. I was going to be ugly. And her husband is also tall now. Yeah, he's taller she, than her. Has done the ultimate twirl on the girls yeah. that were like, well, she's in these failed relationships. 
and she's these all these rental boyfriends. And now when she comes back with her peach in her hand in a few months, she will be married. She will be a housewife officially <laughs> of Atlanta. And I'm proud of her. I'm happy because for her. that's so that's like been her number one thing. It's been a journey for her for a long time outside of a, a house, outside of even being on this goddamn episode. All the episodes, the TV show. Mm-hmm. She wanted to be fucking married, and she is fucking married now. I don't know if we ever gonna see it on the show. I I venture to think we will. But my last call is to you. Our Detroit sister is married, and I'm excited for her. I'm trying to be like you. That is this week's episode of Here for a Podcast. Check us out on social media: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Here for it Pod and Connect Pal. Hereforpod.com is coming soon. Shall the web designer finally get back to me? I don't know where where can I find a web designer with like a three four week turnaround? Name the price, child Jesus. Um, so our, our web designer is not listening to the show, right? And my name is Ronald Matters. You can check me out on the internet at Ronald Matters. Follow me on follow me on social media um, at R O N A L D M A T T E R S. And I am the Superman. No, there you're not. is only one, especially one with all his teeth. I found one on Amazon. You are a liar. Um, no, I did find one on Tumblr. He had on the Superman socks. They were nice socks. Oh, so he, he's a foot model. Ronaldmatters.tumblr.com. Okay, so he has yeah. foot models over there <laughs> using, using my name. Don't make me sue a bitch. I am the Superman, T H E S U P A M A N. You can find me on anything you can find anybody on. And thank you for can listening. Can I find you on the sock website? I, I don't model socks. Uh, well, you need to step up your modeling career. I did model socks for um, testicular cancer. Oh, uh, we did do that. When I put a sock over my whole dick and nuts and put it on the internet, and the Instagram said no. Can we can we do that TBT for this week? No. They oh, said no, and they, they deleted that, it. They took down no. Issue. You're yeah. trying okay. to. I don't want to get your account removed. Okay, hey, damn. This is also our first official one hour episode of Here for a Podcast. We're so y'all got some bonus bonus minutes. So I'm trying to get some bonus other things, but you trying to get boned. We'll see you next week. Bye. Well, we'll hear you next week. You'll listen to us next week. What is the right term? To we're going to see you next week because they be out in the streets talking to us. So we're going to see them soon. Love you more. Bye. Bye.